Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black ninja deck featuring Kaito Shizuki as our commander, a 3-mana planeswalker with a very unique passive ability which will phase itself out the first turn that we play him, giving it some built-in protection as we'll be able to at least activate him twice, usually starting with the minus 2 ability making a 1-1 unblockable ninja creature token, which will then also set up the plus 1 ability to draw a card and then we discard a card unless we've attacked this turn and we've got plenty of cheap evasive creatures to help enable the plus one ability so we don't have to discard a card, and they're also great to set up our various ninjutsu creatures. Taking a look at Moon Circuit Hacker, a 2 mana 2-1 two with ninjutsu for a single blue mana, meaning we can return an unblocked attacker we control back to our hand, and then put this card onto the battlefield from our hand, tapped and attacking. This gets around most counter spells, and it also gives us a nice mana discount compared to the regular casting cost. And then in addition, a lot of our ninja creatures also have a beneficial ability when they deal combat damage to an opponent, and by using ninjutsu we can guarantee that first hit. Taking a look at our hacker, if it deals combat damage to a player, we may draw a card, and if we do, discard a card unless the hacker just entered the battlefield. Then there's no cheaper enabler than Ornithopter, a 0 mana, 0 2 flyer. So if this attacks and the opponent doesn't have any flying or reach creatures back to block, we'll be able to put one of our ninjutsu creatures into play by picking up our Ornithopter, which we can then easily replay to enable future ninjutsu creatures. Most of our enablers are 1 mana, 1 1 flyers with additional upside. Taking a look at Fairy Seer lets us scry 2 when it enters the battlefield, so we also don't mind picking it back up so we can replay it and scry 2 once again. We also have a few unblockable creatures to enable Ninjutsu in case the opponent has some flying or reach creatures back, like the Miscloaked Herald. We've got Slither Blade and Changeling Outcast which has all creature types including Ninja and Rogue which have a few additional synergies in our deck. Then the Thousand Faced Shadow also has Ninjutsu itself at 4 mana, so we can potentially copy another unblocked attacker, which can also get out of hand in the late game once we get to chain together a whole bunch of Ninjutsu creatures in the same turn. And then at 2 mana we've got the Ghostly Pilfer, just a good card in Brawl, as it will draw a card when the opponent plays their commander, as it's considered from outside their hand, and then we can also discard a card to make it unblockable, or pay 2 when it untaps to draw a card. Then taking a look at our various ninjutsu creatures, we've already covered our hacker. The silencer can discard a creature card to destroy an opposing creature or planeswalker when it connects. The prowler can give a creature death touch and lifelink until end of turn when it enters a battlefield. Skull snatcher can exile cards from the opponent's graveyard. The saboteur can conjure copies of a virus beetle into our hand. We've got the Silver for Master, giving our ninjutsu abilities a 1 mana discount, as well as pumping our ninjas and rogues by 1. The Miss Syndicate Naga will make copies of itself when it connects, so we can quickly assemble an army of 3-1 Naga ninjas. Prosperous Thief makes a treasure token whenever one or more ninjas or rogues deal damage to the opponent. We've got the Biting Palm Ninja, which will discard a card from the opponent's hand. We've got Moon Sage's Scion providing card advantage. Shinobi making 1-1 Flying Illusion tokens. We've got the Specialist, which will bounce a creature when it enters. Ninja of the Deep Hours and Ingenious Infiltrator can draw extra cards. We've got the Smoke Shaper making a creature indestructible. And then the Okiba Gang Shinobi making the opponent discard two cards when it connects. Then our next category are Interactive Spells, Removal. We've got Fading Hope, Stern Dismissal, Unsummon and Brazen Borrower as Bounce Spells. And then a whole bunch of Spot Removal, which also includes Feed the Swarm to take out enchantments. And then a Price of Fame only costs 2 mana when targeting opposing legendary creatures, and also lets us surveil 2. Then the next category is Card Draw. Of course we already have Kaito providing card advantage with the plus 1, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more. We've got Charred Cores and Painful Bond, which can draw 2 cards, and Ninjutsu gets around the drawback of Painful Bond. We've got Grasalax, Coastal Piracy, and Reconnaissance Mission, which reward us for hitting the opponent with small evasive creatures by drawing extra cards. Umezawa, another payoff for using Ninjutsu in the first place. And then a Siphoner, a new addition from Alchemy, can potentially get back an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, and then only cost 2 mana if we don't have any of those in hand. Then the next category are Counter Spells. We've got the Classic, Tails and, and Wash Away great at countering opposing commanders and then negate and disdainful stroke to maybe counter big sweepers or other powerful plays from the opponent. We've got a couple discard spells to clear a path with Dreadfugue, Duress, Inquisition and Thoughtseize, 
and then a little bit of mana acceleration. Don't need a whole lot of it, just have Mindstone, Arcane Signet, and Dark Ritual, because for the most part we're just curving out with a one drop into maybe Ninjutsu on turn two, and then play our Planeswalker turn three, so we don't need a ton of ramp. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, a few utility lands like the new channel lands from Kamigawa, we've got the Castle for card draw, and Hive of the Eye Tyrant as one of the better creature lands that's relatively cheap to activate, and then a whole bunch of blue-black dual lands for mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Valky slash Tybalt, so red-black control. Our hand is okay. Don't expect Fatal Push to be amazing, but Fabled Passage can maybe enable Revolt for it. Turn 1 Herald, turn 2 might just play Master without using Ninjutsu. And then turn 3 Kaito as our card draw engine. Signet, opponent off to a nice start. And they've got removal too. Although not waiting for a potential ninjutsu creature. Could play my own signet now. Although I kind of want a creature in play to leverage Kaito's plus ability. Sculpting Steel copies Arcane Signet. And a Cold Steel Heart. Alright, so next turn we could already see 7 mana Tybalt. And we don't have the best answer to it in hand, sadly. Get in, get out. Thanks. I'll be taking... Our deck is a bit light on interaction for Planeswalkers once they're in play. Can counter them, but once they are on the battlefields, we don't have a ton of ways to remove them. Inquisition would have been useful earlier. So what's my plan here? Can Ninjutsu for one mana and then maybe replay Master? Probably want to check out their hand to make sure there's no sweeper in our future. Alright, Grim Tutor, Mind Stone, let's take the Tutor. And then... Yeah, I think we... Attack... Tybalt's... Ninjutsu for one. I'm probably gonna make a Ninja to keep up the pressure. Fatal Push can deal with Ghostly Pilfer. And then we can replay Master to maybe pump our team. Opponent finds Ooh Negate. Yeah, I can counter my removal, although I guess we have two of them. So our opponent's got a lot of mana. Inventor's Fair could be sacrificed soon. And that extra mana also makes it easier to replay Tybalt a second time. So still pretty far behind. But we should be able to take out Tybalt now. Once we play our Master. Opponent does cast and negate. Tybalt down. Don't try to follow. We can draw. Best case scenario, we draw a counterspell. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. And bottom both, I think. Okay. We're in trouble if our opponent finds a sweeper. 
at least now we're going wide, so if Tybalt comes down we can hopefully keep up the pressure. Opponent finds coastal piracy. Not too effective on their side of the battlefield, but I would have liked to draw it myself. Ooh, Nashi. So we can uh, go after Tybalt, Ninjutsu Nashi, using Fairy Seer. And now we get to maybe cast some cards over the top. It's only fair. Ooh, Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Don't mind if I do. That's great insurance against sweepers. And a Miss Syndicate Naga I'll keep on top. Can flash in Spectral Sailor. And now I'm feeling a lot better about my chances. Don't know if the opponent's playing Paradox Engine to maybe combo with all their mana artifacts. So that could still maybe set up some infinite combo. It's gonna be a Shadow Skull Smashing, taking out both Planeswalkers. Alright, that's a setback. I think we gotta go for the throat here and flash in Sailor for extra pressure. How relevant is it? We've got 10, 15 on the board, plus maybe 2 from Naga. Maybe Sailor's a bit ambitious here. I'll just keep it in hand now that we lost Liliana. So we'll attack. And then Ninjutsu for 2 mana thanks to our master. Probably still pick up Fairies here. Opponents at 5. I guess it was one more damage from Naga getting pumped. Can play Relic or just a land is probably better here. And then can go Fairy Seer, see what's on top. Probably don't need discard spells at this stage. And I could play Kaito and draw as opposed to Sailor. Although I can flash in Sailor and draw with it. So if they do have a sweeper, I at least uh, have something in play to maybe ninjutsu with. Could have also used ninjutsu on one of my more valuable creatures to kind of pick it up in my hand. So we uh, don't lose it to a sweeper, but also kind of want to connect with Nashi. Opponent finds key to the archive. Do they have the mana to maybe time warp afterwards? I don't think so. So, last ditch effort to find something useful. Unless they've got a sweeper in hand here. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Very close game here against Tybalt. Needed every point of power to take out the opponent's Planeswalker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Zakama, so a ramp deck. Having access to a counter spell is huge. So I think this might be a keep, even though we have a few too many cheap creatures and not enough actual ninjutsu cards. If we find a third land, we'll be able to uh, play Kaito for card advantage, and I get to scry two here to find one of them. Chart of course and Fabled Passage, both reasonable. Could keep chart a course on top to draw two next turn and then draw into Fabled Passage hopefully find another land along the way could have also kept the land on top first just play an extra one drop next turn to be guaranteed a turn three Kaito we'll try this approach there we go so now I get to play Kaito on three to make sure we keep hitting our land drops and find more interaction Ornithopter is pretty annoying, has a potential blocker, but doesn't stop me from getting the extra card from Kaito. So we'll attack. At some point I can also tap it down with the Disruptor. 
Doesn't seem necessary right now. Plenty of one mana evasive creatures, so if we find a coastal piracy effect, that could be quite effective. So, step one probably attack. Do I want to play Disruptor first? Maybe that is worth it, although I'm not planning to ninjutsu anything. It's just for one damage, basically. Uh, we'll attack. Opponents maybe contemplating a removal spell. Before I get to turn my creature sideways. Alright, we get to attack. And I think I'm happy still drawing cards here to find more interaction. Ooh, there we go, reconnaissance mission. So... Probably okay going double one drop keep up counter spell at this point. And I'll hang on to Disruptor. And then next turn we can Disruptor plus maybe play a reconnaissance mission. Opponent's got six mana here. Grow from the ashes kicked. Yeah, that's a lot of extra mana. Even though would love to counter Zakama. Still probably okay to counter this and hope to dig into another counter spell. So we'll play Disruptor plus Reconnaissance Mission, which will draw three cards. Unless they've got a Lightning Bolt here. And then we'll have to decide if we want to make a ninja or draw an extra card. Heartless Act can take out a mana creature. I think I'm still drawing here. Would love to find another counter spell. Seven mana for the opponents. Getting closer to nine mana, which is what they need for Zakama. Heroic intervention into maybe a sweeper here. All right. So they got rid of all our creatures. Not where we want to be. Now this is getting fun. So now we gotta get back on the board. But uh, probably fine to take out one of their mana creatures. Let's say the Ornithopter. And then play Nashi. Make a ninja. Could be okay. I'll go to the second main phase here. Get rid of that floating mana. And then this needs to go on black. Although, are we on the play or draw? I guess we were on the play, so don't get to play Crossroads untapped. So I can go Umezawa tap land, I guess. And Scry. Ooh, Shinobi. Yeah, I think we'll keep that. Make a ninja. Our eyes are everywhere. Regrowth for ramp. So we'll be able to ninjutsu the shinobi here. Seems better than Nashi. Get their last card. So let's move to combats. See how they block. And then 
Let's do Shinobi first. Finding... Not sure what we prefer. At this point, maybe Grasselax. Opponent discards Cleansing Nova, pick up Feed the Swarm, and Fading Hope. Okay. So let's make another ninja. Bounce the elf. <laughs> I've got all kinds of which keeps him from casting Zakama. And do I need an Ornithopter? Not especially. Although it's not a bad enabler. Although I think we're past that point now. Opponent replays Elf. Start by attacking. And then I can ninjutsu Nashi here, perhaps. Find Siphoner. Which can help me get back. A removal spell from the graveyard. We'll see what Nashi finds. Reconnaissance mission draws three. And then a Faber Elder from the opponent's deck, which we can play using three life. Kaito gets to draw. Inquisition doesn't do much. So I want to kill the elf, or I can keep up Soul Shatter to kill Zakama in response to the trigger so it doesn't do anything, which is also reasonable. And then that doesn't really leave enough mana for anything else. Alright, we'll pass. Get rid of Inquisition, Fugue, and what else? Maybe a Smoke Shaper and a Land. Opponent plays Zakama. In response to the trigger, Soul Shatter. Plain White Celebration, gaining life, making citizen tokens. Fair enough. Okay, so. What's next for us? We could kill one of the citizens. Still into killing the elf as well. Specialists can bounce one of the tokens before we attack. And then... I could kill the other one. And our opponent has seen enough here. Very far behind on board, we're drawing about 5 cards per turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Tatiova, blue-green ramp. Our hand is... Okay, not great. We're missing an early ninjutsu enabler. Fatal push is unlikely to be very effective against the opponent early on. So I think we can maybe try and look for something a little bit better. That lets us ninjutsu on turn 2, potentially. Alright, no turn to ninjutsu, but I'm liking the spot removal to answer Tatiova at least. And then a pilfer can maybe draw a card. The plant actually quite relevant in this matchup. Can potentially postpone ninjutsu by turn. Many journeys puts an extra land in play. So I think we'll just attack and then draw with Kaito. Opponent does not jump. We could ninjutsu, but nothing really worth cheating into play. So we've got our card draw engine. 
and uh, yeah, a bunch of removal to clear a path. But the blue-green ramp deck can certainly go over the top. And we'll probably have to remove the 3-3 three, three creature here at some point. Spring Bloom, another annoying blocker. We will untap. Not gonna pay. Okay, so what's the plan here? Didn't really want to trade Pilfer for Spring Bloom Druid. So for now I could make a ninja and pass with a bunch of mana up. Don't really want to use spot removal on the Spring Bloom Druids. And then Spectral Sailor will be a nice way to enable a lot of our cards as well. So that seems fine. Our eyes are everywhere. And best case scenario, we get to kill Tatiova here. But there's always the likeness to take out, so Pilfer draws. And Tatiova resolves. We'll try and take her out first chance we get, which would be now. And then I guess we'll keep Infernal Grasp, which is less conditional in nature. So we both got to draw cards in this exchange, but our opponent spends quite a bit more mana. Do I want to Infernal Grasp the likeness? I think we just flash and Sailor instead. And then Sailor can attack. We can Ninjutsu the Saboteur alongside the Ninja, of course. And then we'll see what we draw first before deciding how to proceed. And then Kaito draws. Dismissal could maybe bounce the likeness back. Or we can play a virus beetle to chump. Keeping up negates not a bad idea though. So probably okay to pass with the plan of flashing in sailor. And then either we can kill something, negates or bounce. Sir so opponent moves to combats. And let's bounce the likeness. Opponent replays it. I could negate, I don't think I do. Would rather replay Sailor. Ooh, Ancient Green Warden. That's certainly worth killing. But I think we still flash in Sailor first. And then this has Reach, so we have to take it out now. Ninja plus Sailor attack. Do I want to... Ninjutsu anything? I don't think so. We'll attack, draw with Kaito. And then I can Virus Beetle chart a course or keep him negate. When I have three cards in hand, Virus Beetle seems pretty effective. Opponent discarded Multani. Alright, that's not the best one to make them discard. And then, do I keep up Negate? It's a relatively big opportunity cost to do so. I think we chart, of course. Alright. And pass. Might have wanted to chart a course first, and then would have been able to either Thoughtseize or Inquisition. Verdant Mastery for Ramp. I don't think I would have necessarily negated that. Different story if they already have Tatiova in play, of course. 
And at some point we can also use the Pilfer's ability, maybe get rid of an Inquisition that's not doing anything for us. So we can get some unblockable damage in. Opponent is still at 25, they've gained quite a bit of life. So step one, Thoughtseize, in case they don't have any target for Inquisition. And Broken Bond plus Dryad can take both here. Alright, and I guess your opponent doesn't like that and scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Emil the Blessed, a flicker deck. So we're gonna need some creature interaction. Unsummon's nice, but negate not so much, and we're missing a cheap enabler for Ninjutsu and for Kaito. So I think we can do better. This hand is missing black mana. I can cycle Reconnaissance Mission if I have to. Once again, negate that I don't really care about too much. So this is a tough one. Soul, Shatter and Price of Fame are both nice. I'll try it. And ideally, we can hit our land drops, especially black mana. There we go. So no need to cycle Reconnaissance Mission now. Can maybe counter an early ramp card. Destiny Spinner, not so much. So we'll attack, play Kaito, and could make a ninja to set up Reconnaissance Mission next turn. And then now, we've got a bit of a board presence, lots of unblockable creatures, and hopefully a removal to kind of back them up. Branchwalker finds a dual land. So next turn we could see a meal, although never mind, opponent doesn't have double white. Play mission, draw two, draw one more with Kaito, which will fall to the opposing creatures here, but that's okay. Brazen Borrower is good interaction too. So yeah, my hand's looking good. Opponent is unlikely to have many sweeper effects or a ton of spot removal. So I can keep hopefully drawing cards with my unblockable creatures. And then plenty of creature interaction to make sure we don't fall behind on board. So step one, probably attack. Could Inquisition first. Don't think that's necessary. And then, also no need to ninjutsu just yet. Nothing I really want to bounce. Alright, ninja of the deep hours could be fun though. So let's maybe play another cheap enabler. And then I can inquisition, keep up brazen borrower. See what they're working with. Reduce to memory and Serpo Pard. Take the Serpo Pard. Can negate Reduce to memory if needed. Opponent does have a Sweeper, Fumigate. And then Kogla is going to be scary if that comes down. Trostani also pretty good. Alright, opponent is going to reduce our enchantment. We'll negate. And then just going to attack with the team, Ninjutsu, Ninja of the Deep Hours. Picking up doesn't really matter. And 
then we can maybe use a smoke shaper, sort of a combo trick to make our ninja indestructible. Counter spells huge. All right, so don't need to draw more cards with charter cords. Can maybe replay heralds, play the tamped fetid pools, keep up counter spell, brazen borrower. Or I can give myself more flexibility with Soul Shatter. But we already have Price of Fame available, which should be enough. And then discard to hand size. Maybe a Swamp can go. Alongside. And this is tough. I guess Charter Course is not needed. Already drawing a million cards thanks to our mission. And yeah, Kogla is legendary, so we can destroy it in response to the fight. We'll take two. And if they go for Fumigate, we can counter. Guardian Project instead, that is uncounterable here. And we can bounce it back end of turn. Keep attacking. And then we'll use the Smoke Shaper. Make our ninja indestructible. Draw a bunch more cards. And we've got the Fumigate covered here. Now, interesting fact, we could still ninjutsu after damage, but before the second main phase, if we wanted to put something in play. Don't think that's necessary. But it is maybe a cool way to pick up some uh, ninjutsu creatures so we can reuse them. So for now, replay Herald looks good. And pass discarding Swamp. Kogalan comes down. And yeah, we can just destroy it with, let's say, Price of Fame in response to the fight. And I guess we'll kill the Destiny Spinner too while we're at it. Untap. And then we should have Lethal here. If we ninjutsu a couple creatures. That should be 10 damage. Alright. Well, nice uh, showcase of Reconnaissance mission once again. But our deck has a few of these Coastal Piracy-like effects. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kaikar, Winds Fury, Jeskai spells. So it could be a tough matchup. Do you have an answer to Kaikar? And then early enabler, a couple ninjutsu creatures, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully no early removal here. Although the pause is making me think they're holding a lightning bolt. So now we don't have an early creature to back up Kaito. We'll play Kaito, make a ninja. Although plusing is also reasonable here if we expect another removal spell. And then I can maybe get rid of one of my lands or one of my ninjas. Yeah, the fact that they've got the two mana here feels like they've got another burn spell. And while Kaito phases out, they could still potentially kill Kaito in my turn with the burn spell. If I were to minus instead of plus. Expands comes into play tapped here, so no Kai card this turn. Well, 
Well, the Shinobi could be quite effective. So, plus versus minus is still a big question. Maybe now going minus play Humizawa's okay. Might be running into sweepers, the, the main issue, like burn spell, kai turn of turn, and tap play sweeper. Doesn't leave us in a great spot. But I do want to get a creature down so we can start using ninjutsu. So, how about I could just play the shinobi and then use that as a, a target for removal. And then still make a ninja as well. Satoru is less likely to be killed, but then they would just kill the ninja. I don't get any value from this, so I'll be more mana efficient using the shinobi. Make a ninja, and hopefully one of our two creatures survives. I got someone on the inside who can help. Opponent on taps. Do we see a sweeper? Yep. It's too bad. At least we still have Kaito. Now Spectral Sailors, more like it. Shard, of course, no could be great. I want to keep hitting my land drops. I want to keep Shinobi, definitely Sailor. So it's either Umezawa or Chart, of course, I think. Let's go with maybe Chart, of course. And then play Umezawa, keep up Spectral Sailor, and Heartless Act slash Price of Fame. Prismari Command plus another Burn Spell here, gonna take out Umezawa. Increasing Vengeance to copy it. Okay. And hopefully there's no more instant speed interaction here to take out my... Spectral Sailor or Shinobi, if they're patient enough to wait for the ninjutsu. Although, because of Kaito, they're sort of incentivized to kill my creature before it turns sideways. Infiltrator, I don't want a hard cast yet. So we'll attack. And see if they want to do anything here. They don't. But it does sort of feel like they're holding more interaction. And it's more likely to take out Shinobi than it is Infiltrator. Although, of course, the payoff on Shinobi is much higher. So I think we still go for it. And then keep a blue mana to replay Sailor. Go to damage. The fairy's protection. Fair enough. And we can draw. Now this is a juicy Pass it back. Opponent's down to one card in hand, so Shinobi is not going to do a whole lot. But it is still a ninja for infiltrator purposes. Kai car resolves. And now I have to decide if I want to play Sailor or maybe go for a removal spell instead. I think we play Sailor, untap, and then use removal. And that way, if I ninja to infiltrator, I've got more ninjas in play to connect with. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Hinata, Jeskai Control. What do we think of this hand? Could be okay if we scry into some more cheap creatures, perhaps. And we've got a Reconnaissance mission, which has been our all-star in our series of games so far. Can bottom both. Probably draw another land at some point. 
So no early action here. Next turn we can attempt to resolve Kaito. Guardian Idol. Alright, at least it means we don't have to worry about a counter just yet. Dark Rituals, interesting. So if I Dark Ritual Kaito, I can still keep up Wash Away. Or I could go for a Reconnaissance mission right now. Although I wouldn't have the mana for Wash Away afterwards. I think Dark Ritual in Kaito to keep up Wash Away is reasonable. Although we do have Heartless Act to kill Hinata. So it's not a huge concern if they play it. So maybe I'll save it for another turn. And then I think we just plus to draw as opposed to making a ninja, which could run into a sweeper. Even though mission kind of wants me to deploy a few more creatures out. Four mana, do we see Hinata? If we do, the plan's just Heartless Act. Attack, play Hope of Girapur, draw card. And slowly set up for our Reconnaissance mission. It's gonna be a Pirate's Pillage instead. So they maybe want to play Hinata and have some mana left over. So now the plan's gonna be to keep up Wash Away. Do I want to Dark Ritual out? A Reconnaissance mission is the question. Don't hate it. Still have enough mana for Hope of Girapur. We'll attack. But they might have removal here. Well, they didn't kill fairies here before it attacked, so probably no removal then. Negate could also be huge. So hopefully they go for Hinata. For just a single blue, there's not many counter spells that would counter it. They can even pay for Mystical Dispute, so it would be quite reasonable for them to go for it. Do not want to see a Sweeper here while we can't cast Negate. Crystal resolves. And our opponent's just going to pass. Alright, fair enough. So if that's the case, I can attack. Siphoner getting back, negate or wash away could also be a big deal. Do I want to negate a fire prophecy? Yeah, it's probably fine. Keeps an extra creature in play for a reconnaissance mission, so we get to recoup that card right away. Source of plowshares as well. Alright, I guess we'll let the hope go. And then attack for one, draw a card. And draw another card. Can play Signets and still have Wash Away available. Alongside a couple of removal spells, although we won't be able to cast them because of the extra attacks from Hinata. So is it time? Kaito is on 6 loyalty, so getting closer to an ultimate. Narset to play. That will resolve. Let me demonstrate the prowess of my they could turn on Guardian Idol, which I guess I could kill here. Narset can minus, so probably gonna see a big spell taking out Kaito. Or a smaller one taking out Fairy Seer. Yep, just 6 damage to Kaito. Fair enough. What I to. Yeah, opponent's being shy about playing Hinata here. Alright, there we go. And 
and we can ninjutsu to take out Narsets. That seems okay. We will lose out on the card draw for mission, but that's fine. And then we'll chart a course to draw two, see what we pick up, and then play Fairy Seer. Or I could scry first, but I might not have the mana to play any counters we draw. Okay. Do I just want to unload here? Fading Hope, Ornithopter, bottom both, already have enablers and bound spells. Can add a Slither Blade to the board, although then we might be overextending into a Sweeper, so I'll play it safe. They could play Hinata for 6 mana. Still maybe play a removal spell afterwards. In which case I can, I guess, not bounce my own creature, because this is not an unsummon. So we get to untap. And I will Heartless Act Hinata before moving to combat. Opponent's got a memory lapse, in which case I will Infernal Grasp. Opponent is down to one card in hand. Hinata down. And we'll get to draw two, hopefully. And do I want to commit Slither Blade to the board? Yeah, maybe it's okay now. Still have some leftovers in hand in case of a sweeper. So Hinata now costing 8 mana. They could still replay it. But they know about Heartless Act. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Reconnaissance Mission putting in a ton of work. It's kind of unfortunate that we drew it almost every game, because we didn't get to see a ton of variety in gameplay. But what are you going to do? So yeah, overall, Kaito Brawl, a deck that wants to get on the board early maybe get one of its card draw engines in play, whether it's Kaito or one of our enchantments, and then kind of back it up with cheap interaction to kind of stay ahead and make sure the opponent doesn't ever recover. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.